If we don't worry about our soil health, there isn't gonna be a future. My grandfather started farming in 1949 around here. It's a neat thing to look at the fact that I am farming in the same patch of dirt that he started farming, same as my father. And you know, I wanna have a future for my kids. I'm, I'm not that old, I have plenty of life left. And I've got a little one coming and if you deplete the soil health, if you just run the, the ground ragged and you don't care about soil health, there's not gonna be a future for her. My name's Isaac Freund. I'm third generation dairy farmer on Freund's Farm Inc. in East Canaan, Connecticut. We farm about 500 acres, half and half corn and hay, and then we have a 300 head dairy farm. I'm the crops and equipment guy. My focus is running equipment in the fields, doing the manure management, taking care of the equipment, the maintenance, and also the field work itself. This past fall, we harvested our corn, we immediately jumped into drag lining, we, we spread manure on this field, drag line all the fields, and as soon as that was done, this field was luckily, it was dried out quick, jumped into drilling the triticale in, we put triticale in this field, and then we stayed off this field. We did not step foot in this field until this spring. So this spring, we went through, we planted all of our normal corn, we planted that control, came back after we harvested the triticale off of this field. As soon as the triticale was harvested off this field, we did one day of spreading manure on some other land, came back in, we planted this. We planted the two test plots nine days after the initial control was planted. The best way to keep soil erosion from eroding is to have something growing, putting roots in to hold that soil in place. We've always pushed that cover crops are absolutely necessary. We've never once doubted that. So we have been cover cropping our fields since my grandfather was in farming. Um, so we've been doing it for longer than I've been alive. Um, and so now this is the next step what we're doing with this project where um, the field that we're currently in is triticale that we've harvested and then we're also going to be roller crimping to see what that does and sometimes you need to see the results of somebody else before you can really jump on the bandwagon um, but what's neat is I think through this study I'm hoping that we can be that farm that shows hey this is how what we've done it's worked really well has it always been perfect no there's gonna be those seasons. I mean, this year, it wasn't the best crop in the world because it's been so cold, but it was still a good crop. It was still really good quality. Um, and so now we're trying to, you know, and being able to show that off to other farms. American Farmland Trust was able to connect me with another farmer that's been roller crimping. It was a presentation about roller crimping and this farm that's been doing it. And I sent along that information to my uncle and it made him feel more comfortable. And it's like, okay, we'll roller crimp after. The roller crimping is essentially, it's a big drum that has the pressure points. So as it rolls over this triticale, it'll crimp the stalk, stop water from traveling in it, and it'll kill the crop. And the idea behind it, some a lot of places are using that instead of herbicide. The struggle that we've had with it is the maturity that you need it to be at to truly kill it with the roller crimper is like May 31st or like June 1st. Like it's a very, and for us it's late. I know there's plenty of farms that are still planting in June. For us, we plant the first week of May, so to push our planting date that late in the season is just not an option for us. For this study, we're roller crimping, and it may turn into, well, that's a way to create a weed mat to help suppress weeds where we don't need as much spraying, as much herbicide, but unfortunately, especially for a year like this where it's been a cold year and it didn't grow very fast, we still have to spray it. So the idea is we're gonna roll it while the corn's still in the ground, um, there'll be no damage to that corn crop. A weed mat is, is it's essentially just the grass is gonna get laid down flat to shade the dirt to stop weeds from growing. If we could not spray, yeah, it'd save us some money, but at the same time, the biggest concern is we hire in that harvester. And the problem is, is if we were to push our entire planting date later, we would have to push them later as well. And then on the other far side of things, come fall, now we're harvesting later, so that means we're putting in the triticale, the cover crop later, so it's not gonna grow as much in the fall. Like everything in farming, it's amazing how much the weather will affect your season. This roller crimper, it's a 15 foot wide pole behind roller crimper. There's four grease points on this, for the two on each side for the drum and two for the lift. There's really not much to it. It's a big drum that you fill with water to put some weight to it. And then it's got a chevron pattern on it. So the idea is as it rolls, it does not till, it does not churn up the ground at all, but it has pressure points that as it rolls, it's gonna physically crimp that stalk and hopefully break the cell structure in there so that it can't pass water and it kills the crop. 
my goal would be to eventually have one mounted on the front of my tractor so that way I can roll a crimp as I plant. So the part of the reason that we're roller crimping after is our concern was if we roller crimp and then we try to plant at a different angle from the way that the grass is laying down, that we wouldn't be able to cut through that mat of triticale. The crop's not mature enough to truly kill it with a roll crimper. We know that. We were still hoping it would at least somewhat lay it down flat and some of it was gonna pop back up. But from so far, I mean, it's all popping back up except for where our wheel tracks are. That's all the whole reason that we're doing this is I might try and hit a couple spots a second time at a different angle. You know, this is a learning project process and we'll see what happens. Didn't cost us anything to get the machine here and try it out and see what it does. And it's not like we, we weren't depending on it. This wasn't the only way we were gonna kill this crop. This was sprayed. This has already been killed technically. We're hoping that it makes a good weed mat and we'll see what happens. I mean, we're trying to maximize the use of this land, but we're also trying to keep the land open. You know, if we fail and the land becomes developed and you don't have wildlife out here. I mean, today was a key showing of that, of, you know, we keep our, our, our wildlife is a big part of what we're doing here is we're trying to not hurt the wildlife. We're trying to keep the ecosystem healthy, you know, and it starts with soil health of making sure the soil is healthy so we're not damaging the ecosystem so that the wildlife that is in the area can prosper.